Okay, here, let's get going. We're, this is like you're behind the scenes of us doing our, our monthly video. Yeah, so this is a first, obviously, with the live <laughs> format. So. Let's see how it goes. There you go. Get going. You ready? Yeah. Hey, it's Tim. And it's Amy from Go With Less. We are very glad you're here to our Facebook group participants who are joining us today. We are trying something out very different. So uh, we're doing this live on Zoom instead of our normal format. And one of the big reasons is because we're hopping on a cruise in a few days. We're offline for 30 days. I, I, we're not doing videos. And our videos take about two full days to record and produce and edit and all of that. And we know that sounds completely crazy, but between so and this is funny so with our, our live format obviously with, with every time we're putting out a video that's recorded it recorded oh i'm fumbling around every time we put out a video this is why it takes us forever to make exactly a video why. happen because i fumble <laughs> around for the entire video and we have to re-record it and re-record it and re-record it we'll have technology issues or whatever. i can't have mush mouth. so anyway so this is uh, so this is new for us but hopefully it cuts down on the editing that amy has to do to make a video happen so what that means, on, uh, we're going to put this on YouTube afterward, and you're not going to see the photos and the videos because that's not going to work on this. So this is the idea of like getting out our numbers, getting out the story. So we're going to start with where we were. Uh, we're going to move into some stories about our month of July, all of our spending and where we're going. Now we're both, this is such a new format for us that we're both a little nervous. This is uh, got very, I mean, like if I have to use the restroom or we have a dog snoring in the background, if there's snoring, it's Rocco the dog. So um, yeah, and if he goes crazy barking at somebody walking in the hallway, then it's going to throw us off. So uh, when it comes to questions, throw us lobs. Like this is not the day to get into like the crazies. This is the day to be like easy lobs to us. So, and we'll do Q&A at the very, very end. So, okay. So are we ready to talk about where we were? That's good. So we were only in two places. We started the month on June the 30th in Edinburgh, Scotland, a new place for us, the country Scotland. We'd never have been there. I, well, I guess it's the country of UK, but Scotland was new for us. And uh, and then on the 19th, we flew down to Barcelona where we went back to uh, a house sit in Sitges, Spain. We were there in early May for three weeks. And then uh, we yeah, I guess we're at the end here of three more weeks in Sieges, Spain. We're going to talk all about our time in Edinburgh and our time in Sieges, but that's kind of it. And because we were on house seats for both of those, there were no nights in hotels. We have zero accommodations for staying, which is going to, you're going to see that reflected yep. really nicely in this month's budget, right? Yeah, one of my favorite things to do is let the cat out of the bag. And so we actually had a, we, uh, we did okay this month. Oh, so. that's all you can say. Okay. That's it. Don't, don't, don't get more than that. Okay. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the weather in Scotland yeah, so because it was nice. In Scotland, we experienced all the seasons. And so we showed up and it was freezing and raining and it lived up to its reputation. So it, uh, it delivered on that. And then as we were getting ready to leave, it got record setting hot. So it was incredibly hot as we were getting ready to leave. So uh, we this had it all there. Weeks. Yeah. So as, as a matter of fact, when I showed up, it's like, I don't know that we want to be here during the summer. We thought this, the UK might be a place we come back to during the summer where the temperature is just a little more temperate, mm -hmm. but we realized that 50, 60 degrees is probably not a, not our sweet spot. That's too And cold. rainy. And rainy, yeah. Because it was gray and rainy and yeah. windy. And what we realized is that the summer in Scotland is the coldest winter we ever want to have. The bingo. <laughs> <laughs> I stole that from Walt Whitman or Mark Twain. I don't know, somebody. But, it was, but yes, cold. It was too cold. But, yeah, but then it was very, it got very, very hot. So, okay. So that was, uh, and while we were there, we had a lot of go with less uh, friends there. We had 14 different friends. We had a ton of meetups. And then two different couples joined us. Uh, they were there for, I don't know, like nine or 10 days. So we didn't just see them like once for lunch. We saw them every single day, unless we were editing last month's video. So two whole days, we stayed home and edited all day and, and did our video. But the other days we had like full afternoon we brought them back to our house, our house that with uh, permission, of course. And uh, and so that was, so we're going to talk a little bit about what we did in Edinburgh. Um, and we were about two miles away from town. So this was a sit we got through Trusted House Sitters. We were two miles away from town, which city center, which actually seemed like we were almost in town and only two miles, but the dog needed a walk of about two miles every single day. The nearest grocery store was a mile. The nearest restaurants were about a mile and city center was two miles. So all of this, and also the buses didn't really run that um, smoothly, right? Yep. They, they run frequent. And we say this uh, anytime we're on a house sit, we're, we're not, it's not like you're on a vacation and this house sit really sort of proved that out. So this was 
being our first time to Edinburgh, there's lots of things we wanted to do. The fact that our friends were there made it so that we really wanted to get out and spend time with our friends and go do the things that there are to do in the city. And so because of some of the constraints around our sit, uh, we didn't, it just made it so that uh, we learned some things about yeah. sitting. We've been sitting for seven years and every time we, we go <laughs> to a new sit, we learn something new. So this particular sit uh, and ev everything we knew uh, about the sit going in, nothing changed in terms yeah. of they didn't like, sell us Dupes. a bill of goods. That's what we weren't doing. No <laughs> so we were about a mile away from the center town, a mile and a half, maybe two miles. two miles. So that, and then also every grocery store that was, uh, that we wanted to get to, it was about a mile away. So all of these things we had to walk to. So if we wanted to go get groceries, we had also we had to walk the dog for about two miles. this, babe. Oh, you, you have to tune in on it live. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure, <laughs> Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, okay. So uh, <laughs> you were crazy. I'm crazy. So, okay. Uh, but what that meant is uh, we could only be gone for four hours yep. total. And so what that meant is that we were exhausted. I, we were saying that we were like doing the Camino in Edinburgh because this was like six miles plus our activity. If we went to do some museum or the palace or the castle, lots of walking, doing these activities, plus the six miles that we were doing on top of that. And since we could only be gone for four hours, we, I mean, the walking took like an hour and a half to get anywhere. So we only really had like these little slivers of time, two to three hours with our friends, uh, which was not enough. So what, what did we get to do more. Well, but hold on. So our lesson though, because we have a lot of house sitting people who watch our videos, the lesson that we learned, we often, when we do our video calls before we accept a house sit, uh, we often accept that call, uh, the house sit on the call. That's very, very normal. I think that we are not going to do that any longer. I think what we're going to do is after we have the call and we see that this is clearly a fit and everything feels good, I really want to get their address, scope out on Google Maps where the grocery stores are, uh, where the bus is. And it's not that the bus was right down the block. So the bus was really convenient. But if I had seen that it was every hour that would have and that the things in town were were at least 45 minutes away that would have maybe I, I i would have at least had different expectations completely agree yeah so, so that was so what we'll do from now on i think is take that and maybe accept the house at like an hour later so okay after we get off the call save the time go on to google maps do our little due diligence and be like okay we're good to go after we have your address there you go yeah okay so what do we do in edinburgh so, so I'll let you start. Oh, I will. Okay. So we went to Holyrood Palace. That was uh, incredible. This is the Queen's Palace when she is in the city of Edinburgh. She has another palace in Scotland that she visits. That was awesome. We also went to Edinburgh Castle, which is the thing that is the iconic castle that's up on the hill. That was super cool. We also went to two separate uh, art museums both free. Uh, that were free, okay. which is our favorite uh, type of museum. Uh, we also went on a free walking tour, which free walking tours are not free because you're going to tip, but that was phenomenal. Uh, we visited the Royal Mile, which is something you have to do when you're there. We did a uh, lot. Yeah, we spent quite a bit of time with our friends just sort of hanging out. I think two different times our friends came back to our home. Uh, hours and, and hours and hours of fun with us. And that was fantastic. Yeah. So, so we had a great time in, in Edinburgh. Yeah, we went to a little seaside town. There's there, there's, there's just, Edinburgh is beautiful. Uh, the people were really friendly. Again, we were there with some really nice weather. So even on a chilly day, it was like maybe 60 degrees, so not unbearable. Uh, but it was, it was really lovely. And we would go back for sure. Yeah, definitely. For sure. For sure. We just would want to be closer to city center. And maybe not be on a house sit. Or in a, or in a house sit that's in the sit center of the city. Okay, so then we came to Seaches, and actually, I'm even going to back up a little bit because this will come up in one of our categories, but I also celebrated a birthday in July, and what was so amazing, so uh, as, thanks, Chris, as, uh, as Tim mentioned, we saw 14 Go With Lessers, which was incredible, and actually, I don't like to call them Go With Lessers. I call them like GWLers because I write it a lot. I don't like the idea of lessers. Thank you, Sheila. Um, so GWLers, 14 of them, so it was really, really social, but these two couples that came, we spent almost every single day. We had an activity like every afternoon there. when they were with us. And um, and so uh, a, a friend of ours had said, Amy, there's this incredible restaurant in Edinburgh. You've got to try it. And I looked at it. It was like these prefix menus were very normal there. And I said, that's not in our budget. That's really, I, we have a video about like, I, we can't afford that. It's a Michelin star restaurant. It's a one star Michelin restaurant. And I said, we can't afford that, uh, which is, which we could afford it, but we didn't want to pay the money for it is the answer. And she's like, no, 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 you, you gotta trust me. It is phenomenal. They'll give you a map of where all of your food came from and it's all local. It's all Scotland. And so I said, okay, I'm going to be there for my birthday. So why don't we do it for my birthday? So uh, our good friend, Don, uh, Don and Mike were in town and Don said, let's get going on planning your birthday in April. I said, my birthday's in the middle of July. That's a little premature. 
whatever. She's like, I don't think so. Let's get going on your birthday. So, uh, so it turns out that when I looked two months early, they were sold out for dinner and all we could get was lunch. But uh, it turns out that lunch was like an extraordinary event. And because we don't do it at least to do this kind of thing quite a bit before we retired, now we don't do it often. And it made it really, really special. We had a four hour lunch. We had to take a very expensive taxi to and from the restaurant to kind of keep within our or permitted times, yes. but uh, but it was, I think it was like it an was, eight course meal. It was a phenomenal yes. event. Uh, the chef, the, the guy, his, his name is actually Kitchen. It's not spelled like the, mm-hmm. like a kitchen, but he came to our table and, and helped us with one of our courses. And it was, uh, it was a completely awesome. It was very interactive. It was paced really nicely. Yep. And then during the lunch, uh, so we, even though it was a four hour lunch, it was actually kind of moving quite quickly. So Don said, we've made a gift for you and you need to take 10 minutes to listen to this gift. And uh, I'm like, well, we're in the middle of this meal. Could we just do it later? She says, no, no, you have to do it right now. I'm like, but I'm going to miss all the, they, they have like a list of 12 ingredients on every single thing. And by the way, the accent in Scotland is really hard to understand. So I really needed to be paying attention. I couldn't have any headphones in or I wouldn't know what we were eating. And- um, What did you think it was going to be? I had no idea what it was going to be. I thought she was going to show me like a, a fun song on YouTube. I didn't, I didn't know. But what, she, what Tim and Don created was a video. It worked out to almost 15 minutes of something like a hundred of my friends and family members all sending in a video of wishing me happy birthday all over the world. And it was, I cried the entire time and I'm not a huge crier. So I, I cry at very like tender things. I'm not like, a, so and that was as, t- as that was like the most. I don't know if I don't cry now. That would be so embarrassing on your wife. <laughs> but uh, it was the most moving gift. First of all, the effort of uh, Tim and Don to do all that. But um, and this was Don, Don's idea. <laughs> about the- <laughs> it was like what? <laughs> I happily signed up for it. As a matter of fact, I, I thank you, Don, for coming up with the idea. It's just, it's uh, this is not my nature. It was so thoughtful. It was, I'm going to say, I cannot think of a better gift that I've ever received. And I've watched it a million times. I love it so much. And it turns out that they took a little 10 minute break from serving us food. So I didn't even need to miss anything. Um, and when we were there, we had, oh, I guess we'll talk about what things we ate. Okay. Later. Later. Okay. So it's just, it's not like coming home. Didn't yeah, it? it was phenomenal coming back to this. We've been here before, obviously. We love the dog. We love the place. We love the, the homeowners. They're our friends. And so but one one of them is a maybe they're both phenomenal cooks. One one of them cooked for us, <laughs> and we had a fantastic meal lasagna. I think we had this for days after they left. Four days. And so they're just they're great hosts. They make us feel incredibly welcome in their home. Yeah. Everything about the situation right. is is phenomenal. There's not not mm-hmm. a single complaint about being here in Sears. Other than it's too hot. It is too hot. Um, and what, I mean, this was like a rock star sit because they stocked the refrigerator. They made, I think it was one of the best lasagnas like imaginable. So if you're watching this, Jim, I've already told you it. Um, and we don't want to have the same thing. I only like like the same food maybe twice. We had four meals. I was devastated when it was over. <laughs> so yeah, so it was really like that was, and that was, uh, that was actually from Go With Us viewers who have become friends. So uh, so we love Rocco. He is in the back. You can't see him because it's, he's like kind of over Tim's shoulder, uh, but he's adorable. He's a little pug. He's a pug. He's, he's snoring and he's sleeping now. Uh, he has a lot of personality and, uh, and we're catching up on a lot of work because it's so hot. Yeah, we haven't been outside very much at all. So like Amy said, we've had I've, lots of just chores, the chores of living our life. And so we, uh, we've we only been out really a handful of times. We did go see the, the dog. one of the things to do in, in uh, Catalonia is to see these human castles that they build here. And we did that last weekend. I think that was on Sunday or Saturday. Saturday. Saturday we went to see this and it was crazy, crazy cool. We were right there next to one of the the build. Actually saw many of them. I think there are four different teams there. There were. And uh, one of them, we the 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 best, according to, of course, the, the team that was there is that we were next to that team and they built a super high castle. That's, was- that's really cool. I'm going to post a video after this is done. I'm going to post a video okay. of that on YouTube. It was absolutely phenomenal was- where they have like these little, I don't know, like four or five year olds scurry up like nine levels of people. And they like, wear a yeah. helmet. They're like six. They have a helmet. The They're nine so stories so- up, but they have a helmet. <laughs> So, uh, so I'm going to put a video up, a real quickie one on YouTube, just so that it's ready to go as soon as we're done. Um, and it was very local. I didn't see, it was, there were thousands of people there. I didn't see a single person speaking any language other than no, Spanish or no, Catalan. No, no, we yeah, did not fit very, in. It's okay. We like that. It was a bit, it was, oh, yeah, we like it. it was the highlight of our, of our <laughs> No, I, it was, month. nothing was wrong with not fitting in. I'm just saying we were, we, it was We did not amazing. fit in. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. So we are going to talk. And, and so I'm going to even 
so the reason why we went up to the UK was for two reasons. First, to get out of the Schengen zone because we are already at 89 days um, by the time we're done with our cruises. So we needed to get out and give ourselves some non-Schengen time. So that was part of it. The other part was the weather. And it was, we were, it was, it's hard. The answer is, is if you're going to be in Europe, it seems like it's really, really hard to find that sweet spot, like 70, 75 degrees. We'll go up to 85 actually. But here, uh, we're at the sea, so we're right uh, near Barcelona, right at the Mediterranean, and all the weather reports show that it's like 10 degrees cooler than really all of the rest of Europe. We've been in Europe a couple times for long, like house sitting all summer when it's over 100 degrees. It never gets over 90 degrees here ever, but it was still, it didn't really matter, and it's not yeah. even that humid. I don't know why it's so hot. And I was going to say, we're not complaining, but yeah, we are complaining. So <laughs> it, it's, uh, I think I, we, we have this phenomenal uh, life, and so it's not like that the weather is the end-all be-all, but we really do like it uh, like when it's ideal and it hasn't really yeah. delivered for us. It's in the morning and in the evening. So we take the dog on a whole bunch of books. Okay. So in the morning and the evening, it is fast. Agreed. But in the between like 11 a.m. and 7, like, you oh, so like you're going to be a complete puddle of mess. I also, so, I, I've started wearing a, a hat. So I had skin, I've had skin cancer twice. That I've had them removed from my face. And so now I wear a hat and sunglasses and I, anyway, so we have to do that here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so, and here's the thing, Sheila. So when you say it's very humid in Chicago, um, 80 feels like 100, it's not even that humid. It's like 65% humidity, which is not that big of a deal. So I don't know why 88 and 65% humidity, that should feel kind of nice when I'm in like sleeveless, but it, it is, it is, it is too warm. And it's giving us more lessons for like, okay. Well, I, don't, I don't know if they're lessons. As a matter of fact, in the, while we've been here, we've been planning some travel next year and a lot of our, the, first like quarter to half of our year we're going to be in southeast asia and so <laughs> i don't know <laughs> you know maybe we'll acclimate that's right maybe we'll acclimate better than freezing it's tim says every day it's like it's better than freezing so okay so are we ready to talk about our let's, spending let's talk about the numbers let's see if i can share the screen here so you're right. So someone, uh, Sheila says, you need South California weather because it's perfect. And you're absolutely right. But we do like something. Yes. We like, so we love Santa Barbara. We love Los San Angeles. Diego. We love San Diego. But it is too, uh, we, we like different. So, so yeah, so we're we're always looking for that Cinderella spot. And sometimes we find it and sometimes we don't. And Tim's going to pop up our spending. So I'm going to say there's a couple things. We're gonna, first of all, we're not looking for the world's cheapest retirement. We're looking for the best retirement and we're looking to really eat the most out of each. Oh, honey, oh, hold on. Went too fast. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Stop. Okay. Stop, okay. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. So, so we're not looking for the world's cheapest retirement. We're looking for like a fantastic retirement. We're looking to target about $48,000 a year, $4,000 a month. And we have been in a deficit since month one. We started in the hole in January. We have not come out yet, but we uh, hopefully will make a little leeway by the end of the video. Um, and we're still, it's still a mystery uh, through the end of the year, how we're going to be doing because we're really uh, cutting it close. Um, number two, we're not going to be talking where every single penny we've spent is captured, but we're not talking about every penny we spent or this video this is like live video would be 14 hours if we talked about every uh i don't know role that we bought so uh, so okay so with that we'll we'll without wanting to talk about our biggest yeah, so, so fabulous category see, what everybody's seeing right now and so again this zoom format is a little new to us so everybody what everybody should should see on their screen right now is not us they should see our uh part, part of our graph can anybody see us? Or I, Chris and Steve, we can see you right now. You can't see us, right? A little. Uh, yes. Oh, a they little. Can oh, you can see us. Yeah, they can see us awesome. too. Okay, oh, so great. that's a choice maybe you can make. All right. So, uh, so what? What the our, our largest category this month was going to be food, and this is always going to. We, we've said this a million times. We'll say it again and again. When this is our biggest category, we feel like we're doing it right. So this month we spent one thousand two hundred and thirty-eight dollars on food, or thirty-five point six percent of our spending. So a big, big, big chunk of that was Amy's birthday dinner, which we were thrilled to spend that money. Mm -hmm. This was well worth the money. So one of the things that we yeah, have, I, 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 no, 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 no. Oh, okay. I, I had something to say about, okay. Groceries and dining. So we spent $768 on dining and uh, we spent $470 on groceries. Mm -hmm. So back to Amy's birthday dinner. So, uh, so Michelin star restaurants, back when we were earning a living and sort of spending I would, we didn't do them frequently, but we would do them probably multiple times a year. And so I think when we decided that we were going to fire, we sort of took that out of our life and uh, we've added it back a little bit. And part of the reason we took it out is um, it was very expensive. But part of it also is oftentimes we would go have a fancy meal and it just didn't deliver. And so 
when you pay a lot of money for something, you want to feel like you're getting value for it. And oftentimes fancy meals uh, don't deliver. This meal for Amy's birthday, 100% delivered. So uh, even though it was, it was very exquisite. expensive, it certainly was, uh, uh, it was worth the money for us. I'm sure plenty of people would not spend that kind of money on a meal. But, or find uh, value in it, but yeah. we did for sure. And I don't know if you've said it was three hundred and forty-four dollars for the I two of us. That, yeah. um, there was no, I didn't. I, I think you only had like maybe two beers in that, so yeah. that wasn't like a big wine tasting or anything. But again, that was it was the tasting menu. The whole table got the whole thing. And also, just a heads up, when I said uh, to the, the, I asked the group like, who wants to come to this? Uh, these six uh, friends. Um, I'm not expecting people to just join me for a three hundred forty-four dollar lunch. Uh, but they all said like, count us in. We're really excited about that. So, uh, so just. Just a heads up on that. We, we would have just gone, I guess, the two of us otherwise. Okay, so our second biggest expense in the food and dining category was $102 at one of the local grocery stores. And this is just one grocery one, trip. This is our stock up trip. Now, I, do, I don't think that the homeowners were being... Um, working us but uh but they ran out of everything so within they, like the first three days they, of us being there they have a very busy family of their three kids and two adults and so i think they're just uh busy very they're busy really busy and so i think that the, that when things run yes. out in their household they go get them and yes. so it's like they weren't thinking oh we're going to be gone for three weeks and there's going to be people in our house and we need to make sure some of this stuff is there so we did a lot of just uh, stock up on stuff that uh, we first normal, day, normally first day, first day, and so that was our first day stock up. I'm gonna say like so when again we have this is gonna be I mean we have had house sitting all month. So as house sitters, we often buy the things that we are going to make some significant depletion in. Yeah. So if we're there for three weeks, we're gonna buy laundry detergent. We're gonna buy olive oil every time. We eat a lot of salads and we make our own vinaigrette. We're gonna buy um, toilet paper. So things like that. But here are the things that we bought in this shopping trip. This one shopping trip that that, um, that we, we needed to buy because they were out of them. Um, shampoo, soap, toilet paper, paper towels, plastic wrap, dishwasher soap, um, 50 pods was the smallest we could get of dishwasher soap. Uh, like the dish yeah. soap, yeah, the, the pods, laundry detergent, olive oil, vinegar, salt, jam, butter, mustard, etc., etc., etc. So that really affected our groceries when we had to yeah. buy plastic wrap. And we probably only used it like twice, but- uh, We needed it. We needed it. So, yeah. And we also didn't want to leave them with none. And then we used the, the, the two inches left. We didn't want to leave them with none. So, we, so that ended up uh, like being, I think our grocery bill was a little bit higher. And also the UK is also a higher place to buy groceries, but they have yeah. really good prepared food. Yeah, something we found not, not only in the UK, but also here in Spain. And I think our exper prior experience in other parts of Europe is uh, there's something about the grocery maybe it's just because they're different they seem better i think they're just better than back in the states For there's sure. something about uh stuff they put in the food i think they make it last longer chemicals that are in the food that make it in just, the u.s in the u.s that, that aren't here so those chemicals don't live here in the food and so as a matter of fact it's weird so we bought uh, vegetables uh like at the, carrots. the gross carrots and the carrots would go bad after three days that was weird carrots in our fridge at home and i don't know what they put on them at home but they and, it lasts and, like two and, months and maybe this isn't <laughs> typical here in europe either maybe it's just the ones we bought but Anyway, that stuff usually lasts a long time. That's exactly not, right. here. not here. At least not our experience. So cool things we ate. We tried haggis. We both really liked it. Yeah, so we had some fancy haggis. So maybe that was the deal, but it was uh, it was actually good. I liked it quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, we did both like it. And we had uh, fish and chips that were, we had, I mean, the food in Scotland was good. It was international. We had Cullen skink, which was a cool fish chowder. We had that at the sea. That was fun. Uh, and we had sticky toffee pudding. So for a dessert person, Tim didn't have that. I went out with a girlfriend and that's a, a nice little tradition that we have everywhere we see each other. We have a nice lunch or tea and we ended with sticky toffee pudding. That was my only time having it. And it's a good thing that was on our last day because I probably would have wanted it every day. Well, you think we did have dessert of some sort every we day. We did, but not sticky toffee pudding. Yeah. Okay, so number two is transportation. Okay, let's move on here and let's see if I can figure this out. Well, you're doing that. I'm going to... Okay. There it is. Let's there see. you go. Okay. Here's the reveal. Okay. So we spent $693 in transportation this month or 20% of our number. So if you remember earlier in the year, um, I signed up for the American Express uh, Platinum card because there was some accelerated bonus going on. I think I did that in January. So there's another really great offer going on for the American Express Platinum card where Amy's going to get 150,000 points for this card. And so we signed her up and this is half of her annual fee. It's actually 347.50 instead of 348.50. 
eight is fine. Why do you have your bits? Then we round up. Okay, so as we round up. <laughs> we don't do fanning. Okay, there you go. That's, that's too granular. Yeah, no. So, okay, so the reason why we split a $695 annual fee in half, so half goes in transportation, half goes in accommodations. It all works out in the end, but we figured that we're going to use it on airfare, we're going to use it on hotels. So it, it, yeah, it's so a completely it, yeah. arbitrary so allocation. So we just split it half and half. Um, okay, then, ooh, we spent another $257 on another plane ticket. So when we leave Barcelona and head up to our cruises, we're flying, we're, we're going to fly to London and take a train over to Dover to catch our cruise ship. Now, our flight was booked originally at like five o'clock in the morning to give us a lot of time. In the evening. In the evening, sorry, in the evening to give us a lot of time. And it was going to be just a, an easy, breezy, whatever. We booked it a couple months ago. So we're, well, we're flying into London and then we still have to get down to Dover where our cruise is leaving, which is about an hour away from London. So yeah. we were planning originally to spend the night in London. So we had bought a ticket that got us in at like seven or eight in the evening thinking, no problem. And booked a hotel in London that night. And then we're going to take the train in the morning. But there's strikes happening yeah. and all these uh, issues with flying is happening. And so we were very nervous that we, and I, and so in the past, you might be able to catch, not only does no one want to catch up with your cruise as in uh, plan A, but, uh, but now our last cruise, they weren't letting people catch up. So if you miss the first part, you're done. So you are not catching up. And so, uh, so we were so, not wanting to do that. So we booked an, a plan A now, and we booked a morning flight to a different airport, a different airline. Um, actually the house owners on the house that we're doing uh, right now, they were flying from Barcelona right to Stockholm. Their flight was bombed from Wednesday to Saturday. So a what a mess. And so uh, I was and worrying about this for probably going on two weeks. At and least. So I, I was just, I, I, I wasn't sure how it was going to work out. And I thought about maybe we buy just a backup ticket. And ultimately this ticket that we bought is going to be our plan A. It's earlier in the morning. So if, if this flight doesn't happen, we still have our original flight. So the flight that we yes. booked later in the evening is still on the books. And there's some chances. chance we can cancel that flight and maybe get some money back. We don't know. It's only like 150 bucks. So if we have to walk away. So this one was 257. That was purely just a, uh, a buffer. We yeah. talk about this buffer all the time. The more buffers we have, the less stressed our lives are. So that was $257 that hopefully everything is just a okay. And we are happy to eat that. If, if we don't, if we just have less stress. I'm, I'm going to be happy to eat it. If you have been so stressed right. out about that before we got that. Ticket. Easy price to pick, yeah. yeah. So uh, we also had a $26 ride from the homeowner's house to the airport. It was like a, I don't know, like a four what, mile ride. Taxis were expensive in Edinburgh, but it was like a 5 a.m. taxi. So we were not going to be dealing with that erratic bus at five no. in the morning. No. Okay. Let's you ready it. for the, you do number yeah. three. Did the first, last one. So number three <laughs> is accommodations. We spent $654 in accommodations or 18.8% of our uh, budget for the month. Okay, that Not was budget, the other spin for the month. That was the other half of that Amex Platinum and the uh, $190 on Airbnb credit that- uh, yeah, On Amazon Prime Day, I bought some Airbnb credit that was on sale. So it netted out to about 15% off and through some weird back, anyway. It was a 15% off one night. So it's nice. So, so we have like banked $190 at Airbnb. So that will not be in a future month when we are using that. Uh, and then $170, $107 for our storage unit back in Denver. Yep. Not changing that anytime soon. Nope. Okay. Category number four. So health and per <laughs> health and personal care is going to be category number four, $315 or 9.1% of our spending for the month. And so uh, the biggest chunk of this is our health insurance, uh, which is $205 for the month. And then Amy had a dentist experience. And I'm, I'm gonna talk about something that's sort of in this category and sort of not because it's not reflected in the numbers here. But if you remember last month, I bought some glasses when we were in Oxford. <laughs> Within a week, the dog that we were watching ate my brand new glasses that I'd spent a hundred and some odd dollars for. Like 160, yeah. Yeah, so we'd put those glasses on Amy's uh, Chase Sapphire Preferred card. Somebody, a friend, recommended you have uh, some benefits potentially on, on your credit cards. Why don't you go check this out? Sure enough, uh, they I, I had to fill out some forms. Um, and the I, money's in the account. Yeah, the money's already deposited in our account. They just basically wrote us a check. Uh, for the money and uh, boom. And we never back. use that consumer protection. No, we, never, we for, never, we for, never. We forget it exists. Yeah. If something's lost or stolen, many cards that you might have in your wallet have, I shouldn't say many, potentially a card you might have in your wallet has this uh, perk where you uh, you have some insurance on stuff that's uh, ridiculous like this. So sure enough, we did. And I think that's a good example of like, 
travelers helping travelers, nomads helping nomads. Like we, I mean, this is like people, you might use this benefit all the time. Thankfully, we don't have things break and uh, we don't need to use it all the time. But uh, but I think that was like uh, our community helping each other. So I love that. Um, okay. And when Tim mentions our health insurance, that's with IMG Global. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I guess I'll put a video up all about our health insurance, which will be up there for the YouTube crowd. Uh, the $51 Tim mentions at the dentist. Last month, we had our cleanings. It was, I think my cleaning, each one of us, $43, the best cleaning I've had. I don't know that I've had a better cleaning. And so I said, oh, I want to see the dentist and I want to get x-rays, my once a year because it's so affordable. And so that was $51. That was to see the dentist. That was to get x-rays, $51. She didn't speak perfect English, but she spoke enough that I was able to understand and we were able to communicate. Um, her English was good enough to communicate and, and I was really happy to do that. And then you had a weird $29 yeah, so haircut. I got a $29 haircut in Edinburgh. So I, I found this place online that I thought I wanted to go get a haircut. So I called him up and say, do I need an appointment or can I just walk in to get a haircut? I'm like, oh, you need an appointment. He's like, what do you want to have done? And I told them and he's like, well, uh, the, the soonest we can get your haircut is three, three or four days from now. I'm like, okay, great. He's like, do you have a bank card? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, what's the number? And I, and I proceeded to give him the number of my bank card and all the details <laughs> about my bank card. And so then I realized after the fact, it's like, so number one, I, I probably, if I had thought about the fact that it was going to cost $29, I wouldn't obviously have paid $29. He asked if you wanted a scissor cut right? or a, a clipper. It was a clipper cut, a scissor cut. And I also had my nose waxed. That was exciting. He did nose so, wax. I, I, but anyway, I, uh, this, uh, <laughs> But until, it was expensive. until it was all said and done, I, I, I shouldn't have given this person my credit card. And I realized how ridiculous it was. As soon as I hung up, I'm like, that was stupid. But uh, anyway, so I got a $29 haircut that wasn't worth $29 and nothing fancy, certainly. And uh, that was, didn't even come with a beer or anything. I thought they were going to give me a beer at the haircut. As a matter of fact, their site, this is maybe what threw me in. I think it said they're going to give you a beer. I didn't even get a beer. I didn't even hear that story. That's like news to me. Okay, shopping. Oh, shopping. I'm up. So shopping. So we uh, spent $300 in this category, our fifth <laughs> largest category, 8.6% uh, of our spending for the month. And so this was, uh, most of this was made up by mm -hmm. some new luggage that we bought uh, from e-bags that we had shipped to Amy's parents in DC. Uh, we spent $162 on two new bags, which I think is a phenomenal deal. These are bags that we're hoping to carry on. It seems like in Asia, this isn't going to happen, but uh, in many parts of the world, these are bags that should fit in a carry-on bin, and we can stuff some stuff in it. Our, our current carry-on bags are just a little too small and stuffed too full of They're stuff. They're really for tech, tech like that just, laptops. And, and so we were hoping to have a little bit bigger bag. Uh, hopefully, this doesn't bite us too much in Asia. Also, I bought this through a portal, uh, Top Cash Back. So I have 15% back, what's that, maybe 20 bucks or something that's sitting there in the portal for me uh, to go get at some point. But uh, not. so $162 there. And then also I spent $100 at Amazon. Uh, this was an Amazon credit. I uh, bought some uh, some software and some other stuff. And But anyway, the $100 is just Amazon credit. Okay, category number six is entertainment. Oh, entertainment. Entertainment, uh, category number six, $213. <laughs> or 6.1% of our spending. We had mentioned several times as our year was sort of coming together that this category we thought would be creeping up because as we are here in Europe and where things are opening up with COVID, we have all these opportunities to go and do and see things. And I guess it is it's more super than- super reasonable. Just, right, but I, I see- $100 two, a this, person. This doesn't seem like very much considering- uh, okay. Go ahead. Do? I was going to say what we were going to do. Okay. So it was actually kind of expensive. So, uh, but so we went to the Edinburgh Castle. That was $47 for the two of us. We both had, actually, we shared one audio tour. Um, actually, their audio tour wasn't very good. The castle itself was fantastic. They needed, like, the, 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 they had like one through, I don't know, 50 for like, like little recorded bits, but they weren't in a row. There was nothing leading you to like where anything was. Um, so it was kind of erratic. Uh, I would recommend the castle. I wouldn't recommend paying extra for the audio tour if that's something that you do. And then we spent $45 on the Holyrood Palace, which Tim has uh, mentioned that that's where the queen stays when she's in Edinburgh. And she was there just the week beforehand, which was really cool. She has a big uh, week there. I guess she has a whole week is all she's, she's really doing all, all year. Um, that's not very fire. No. Using a home for a week, a year. No. Um, but it was $45 that came with a really, really good audio guide. And we really enjoyed that. And then we, oh my goodness, we had a, uh, a concert in Sitges at a uh, at a really beautiful church, but it was uh, 90 degrees outside at 9 p.m. 
and uh, and they had no air conditioning. They closed the doors. They had no ventilation, no windows, no nothing. They closed the doors. It was like we were cooking in an oven, truly. And it was absolutely beautiful. It was, thank goodness, it was only an hour because it was really lovely. But we were like, I don't think I've ever been that hot in my entire life. With no air, with no crazy. nothing. The music was phenomenal. Did you say we spent 31 bucks on it? $31 okay. on it. And then our free walking tour, uh, we did do Sandemans. That's our favorite free walking tour company. We have done them all over Europe. I think we just booked our ninth and 10th tours with Sandeman. So this was our, uh, one of our, our, I think that was like our eighth tour with Sandemans. And uh, as we tipped him $24 and then in we, Edinburgh. in Edinburgh, and thank you. And then we did a comedy show in Seaches which was uh, at a club here, all in English. They had like five, I don't know, six comedians, a lot of comedians, a mixed bag. They had uh, three from the US, I think. Yeah, three from the US, a person from Scotland, a person from uh, England. So uh, so it was just, it was a fun night out. Um, and it was nice to do that. That was like $21. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. a lot, a lot of things, they brought in a lot of the local like stuff. You would expect at a comedy club they bring in local things as, as references and, and so, we understood it and we understood, we understood they talked it. about the human castle they talked about a lot of things that we were familiar with here in they Seattle. talked about the restaurants like really cool. like we feel like insiders yeah. okay uh category number seven is miscellaneous 39 dollars. that was just mostly for a gift and internet and phone is category number eight 21 dollars. that's just me topping off uh my sim card is i use vodafone here and it's worked beautifully both in spain and in the uk absolutely beautifully and that is basically two months of service it's only uh like ten dollars and fifty cents a month and that includes 50 gig of data and 300 minutes of calling and it only is a 28 day cycle so it's like the very beginning of july the very end of july so $21 included me. And for I had months. Done cell phone service for this month and our Google Fi, both of our accounts, which we have are paused back in the States. So we're not being billed anything for Why are you month. paying for your phone? No, oh, you're so regular. I paid everything last month. So I had some extra credit. I paid 20 euro or 20 pound. I don't know, but because I paid last month. Okay. You already paid up. I'm paid up. Um, okay. So that brings us, oh my goodness. So how did we do oh, no taxes. taxes? Zero. Oh, we love that. Okay. Here we are. So here was our, at our $4,000 target, $3,473 for July. And looking at our entire year. This is our monthly spending. We're now at 106% of our 28,000 target. So if we're at our set, we just finished our seventh month times $4,000, we're at $28,000. So uh, so even though it looks, so we've, we've been creeping down. I think we were like 109 last month. So you can see that our, our past few months have been really much better than the first four months, but we have some very big ticket items, including we go back to the US in September, we're paying out of pocket for our GPs, for a full um, dermatology checkup each. So we're going to be spending some big bucks on, I'm going to assume at least $1,500 on just basic doctor's appointments, just checkup stuff. Yeah, it um, seems like at the end of the year, all these things sort of creep up. We had suggested uh, to ourselves that uh, if we didn't sort of have things pulled together, by maybe next month or the next month, and there's we're probably not we're probably it. not going to make it because the last quarter of the year is typically we were a little over our spending. So uh, we we'll see. I, I don't know. I, yeah. We're not. We don't know that we uh, we don't know. We'll see. Yeah, well, but it's really is a mystery, and we're trying to hit that number. And people will say like, "Oh, you're over. You have to go back to work." That's not true. So it's important to think that we are our, our, our spending is not tied into what we can spend. So what we can spend and what we do spend are really unrelated. We only have picked this $48,000 number to because it's like in the past, we have been able to make it, but we've had a whole bunch of big outliers. As Tim got a new and iPad. Said, and, and we would be disappointed if we didn't make the number. It's just like Amy said, we're not going back to work. It's we, we target making this. And, it's kind of a push goal. Yeah, that's right. So we might do some things. To, medical to stuff. Pull in it there. Back. Uh, we, we, we haven't eaten out really here and see just much. So. Yeah, we're cooking most see. of our food at home. Also, we have next month, uh, the week, or this week, we're on a cruise and we're on that cruise for 30 days and so all foods covered all there's lots of things that are covered so hopefully that this will be a great month for also we'll see it's always a big, yeah so we're, we need to get if we like i said you like you said if we don't get into october um ahead like, of the game. yeah ahead of the game then we are are going to be it. having some trouble okay. with that and i think it's gonna be mostly because of medical because uh that just, yeah, that is what it is. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about where we're going. So on- Take this off and bring it Okay, great. So on, um, on Friday, we hop on a Carnival cruise, uh, three of them. So the first cruise goes around 
the British Isles, and that's a nine-day cruise. And the second cruise was supposed to go to St. Petersburg, Russia, and back to uh, the England uh, port of uh, Dover, oh, the, the England port, the English port. Um, of course, they've cut out St. Petersburg. So we're still going to go over to Helsinki and Copenhagen and Stockholm. And these are all new places for us. We haven't been up in that area of the world. So that's also very exciting. And then we take the same boat from Dover down to Rome, and we fly back to the U.S. in September. This is embarrassing or funny or call it what you will, but I'm building a little animation about all these ports that we're going to. And something that I realized is I didn't know where about 90% of these places were. I thought that things were, <laughs> I, 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 I kind of had a gist. I knew sort of where they are. But like I thought that uh, some places in, in the UK were on the other side of the country. And so as I'm building out this map, it's like, oh, that's there. Oh, that's there. So it's sort of a I get to have a geography lesson through doing that this. That is true. Thing. So, and it does give us a, a, a better geography lesson. You I no, I know where this stuff is. Oh, I need okay. to figure out where Sweden is oh, and, I know where Sweden and is. Finland is. Do you know where Cork is? You said. Oh, I didn't know where Cork. I thought Cork was on the west side of Ireland, not the east. I thought I thought it was on the west side. So that that's there. Okay, so we're going to open this up to. I'm going to read the comments here. I got to go up. So this is going to be kind of funny. Um, so Tim, riff, do something. Oh, I, I <laughs> dance and sing. I'm trying to think what, did we have something funny to tell? Okay, uh, hold on. Oh, so oh, Malacca. So we do keep our, so we keep things in the, like these are carrots in the uh, refrigerator, but even potatoes. I mean, what, how, how, potatoes don't go bad. Potatoes go bad with, within like a couple of days. And so I think that it may be like Tim said, there must not be the kind of chemicals that we're used to, uh, which is a good thing. So uh, I think the, the food has uh, been quite tasty. Uh, like the produce, it, it tastes better. So I think like the lettuce tastes like lettuce. We're not used to lettuce tasting like much unless it's like spin unless it's a really intensely like uh i don't know radicchio or or spinach or something um but they're like the kind of plain mescaline like it, it really is super delicious and the tomatoes i i mean the, the tomatoes in the u.s are are tough but they are they're, they're tough because they don't have much flavor but they are very very flavorful we're having really good fruit um and so malanka asks do we also have travel insurance so no um no so some of our credit cards uh have some amount of coverage and so you have and, and it's all over the map and I haven't spent a lot of time paying attention to the coverage because just like with my glasses, I've never had a need for the coverage. For, for health, uh, we have global coverage with uh, our current health insurance plan that has a high deductible, but we would just go to a doctor and sort of figure it out. And even if we were gonna use some coverage that might exist on one of our credit cards, the same thing would be true. So I guess if we had an event, uh, we'd probably try and figure things out after the fact. Uh, we don't make any purchasing decisions on our credit cards, like uh, with airfare and stuff like that, uh, based upon whether there is coverage or not. I think that might be smart, especially considering all the things that are going on right now, because I'm sure we have amazing features with some of our cards with uh, with travel insurance. But for the most part, we don't uh, we don't leverage the fact that that, that insurance exists. And, uh, and where you say you have insurance for the dangerous stuff, uh, Malanka, like skiing and diving, that makes sense. We um, are trying not to do these dangerous things. <laughs> so. I would actually love to dive. I'd love to scuba. So that's that's potentially on my radar as we get uh, down the road. And actually, there's something. So we are heading to Southeast Asia. And I know that uh, riding a scooter is often uh, insurance companies exclude. don't exclude that. So uh, so I don't know what that what that's going to look like if... Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be on a scooter. I don't want Tim to be on a scooter. I think that's going to be, I know Maybe too many people have had accidents. Yes, yeah, so I'm certainly, I'm not looking to get in six lanes of traffic on a scooter, but if it's a one lane road and it's just me, I, I would be fine on a scooter. I've ridden motorcycles before. I didn't even like, so in Colorado, getting on I-25, which is a four lanes of traffic or whatever, I didn't like getting on I-25. And so um, I, I, we'll see. I, I may or may not do it. Amy's told me I won't, so <laughs> I don't know. Uh. Okay. Oh, see, even, and listen, so, uh, so Malanka says, don't do the scooter. Many accidents happen, which is the entire reason why I, I, no, I like, agree. We have but, some friends, uh, the, the show. She's like the skydiving. I mean, like she's, she's. We <laughs> just had an accident with a scooter. So we, we, Everyone has we, an accident with a scooter. Yeah. See, I don't, if you ride a scooter enough, it seems like an accident is, is just waiting. That's exactly. That's exactly. Yeah. Okay. So if we don't have any more questions, we're going to wrap this up and, and cut that, cut that short. And yeah. yeah. So, so no questions. Come on. This is Sherry. I'm wondering if you guys are working toward this particular status with the cruise line. Is that why you're doing so many in a row? So uh, not yes and no. So the, the reason we're doing all the ones in a row with Carnival is because they were free. 
And, um, and so we, we will have 30 nights when it's all said and done and we will have some level of status with Carnival. I don't know that it's amazing. So it's definitely not amazing. It's not amazing. So as we, we took a cruise earlier in the year on Royal Caribbean uh, coming across the ocean. We were on the boat 14 nights, is that right? And so we don't have any status with Royal Caribbean. We're almost to like the third the tier. Lowest or of something. The we, second we have 29 lowest. nights on Royal Caribbean. So once you get some status with Royal Caribbean, I think there are some really good things that, that come with that. And so um, we might be chasing it a little bit next year, but, uh, but not, 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 uh, not, not so much that uh, we're going to go and we, we do crazy things for a hotel status. As a matter of fact, I, in January, uh, we plan to be in- Rich Hyatt, Sherry, who asked the question. Go with Hyatt hotels for 60 nights, basically in a row so that we get globalist status for two years. So uh, not, not to say that we won't try and chase some uh, uh, cruising status in the future, but not, not this. Not this question. Question. A little bit. because So we did a whole video, Sherry, about this. About So we had 52 nights of cruises this uh, in 2022, this year, and we are paying $100 uh, per night for the two of us uh, on average. And as Melanka asked, does that include tips and fees? Yes. And, and, and on the port taxes, that's everything. And so sometimes on every cruise, we're going to go over and above tipping X extra to our cabin steward, extra to our waiter. Um, but we've already paid all our taxes and tips and everything. Um, but we, so we were able to take uh, advantage of uh, lots of different stacking deals. So I'm going to put the video up also on YouTube about how we got these cruises at such a good rate, because we did a lot of things. We used Marriott cards were giving us a promotion. We used, uh, we matched status from, um, uh, where did we met from Royal? It was, Ad, from, it was from IHG to Wyndham and then Wyndham to Caesars. And uh, and that's ultimately how lots of matching, and but the video is kind of involved, so it's it's kind of a that it's like a, it's a twenty minute answer, and we have a video that's going to answer that, so that'll be a lot easier um, just to give you that. So Sheila says she needs a new credit card uh, for a hotel. Chase have applied and can't get RN. What's RN? Is, can't get RN. is that uh, what's RN? Sure? Mean? Well. Well, she answers that. Um, I'm going to also, uh, right now, right, okay. Um, well, we're going to need a little more information. So that's, that's a little too much. Like, um, So there, there's all kinds of reasons you might not have uh, received, um, been improved for a card. Why don't you message me on Facebook and I'll walk through some of the things that you might want to call there. So just a heads up, if you apply for a credit card in the U.S., and I'm going to make this quick because I know we have people on who aren't U.S. people. So if you are applying to a U.S. credit card, you are not approved literally at the end of that online session, then you should be taking some action. So you should, they say like, oh, we'll let you know in the next month in, by mail. Do not wait. So go and call them immediately. Understand what you can do is ask, for example, if you're calling Chase City um, Capital One, just Google Chase Reconsideration Line, Chase Business Reconsideration Line if you're applying for a business card, City Reconsideration Card uh, Line, and you're going to Google that. Call that phone number. Often they're not open on the weekends. They kind of have not the same. They're not like open 24-7, but call them and ask and be really, really nice. This Sometimes can be the kind of thing that like uh, like you get more honey with, with the, you get more with honey than with vinegar. So be super duper nice. Ask like, hey, I'm just yeah. being approved right away. Why wasn't I approved? Ask them, and they often will give you yeah. an answer. So that that person that's on the line basically has the ability. If they say no, there's a good chance that you're you're done. You and understand so why. Yeah. And and there's all kinds of reasons. A friend had typed in the wrong social security number. Maybe you have too many cards open with them. I'm going to give another little bit. If you have a whole bunch of cards open with Chase, uh, and they say, oh well, you have a lot of credit cards open with us. They're usually pretty honest. Chase is great about it. Since you're mentioning Chase specifically, they they really tell you what the problem is. Um, what you can do is say, oh okay, can and and be ready with this information. Can we move then maybe they say you have too many lines of credit open. Can we move five thousand dollars from my XYZ card to this new card? And every single time we've asked that, which is in the double digits, the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah? agreed. So somebody asked the question: um, Is there a, a good size for a carry-on bag uh, that's that's going to work sort of in all scenarios? So he, here's my suggestion, and this is not going to be for, there's no, in my mind, there's no such thing as a carry-on bag that's going to work for all scenarios. But if you go look at the requirements for a carry-on, not, not, not your purse or your incidental, but for, go, go look at Frontier Airlines and look at what the bag size is there that they'll let you carry on. It's pretty small. 
So that bag is a bag that you're probably going to be able to consistently get on any place you would want to carry on a bag, including in Asia and other places like that. So both of our bags that we currently have, we have a medium sized bag and then we have a- um, Our check-in? Our check-in check bag. Big. It's, 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 it's big-ish. It's like 29 inches in, in US big. lingo. And then uh, we have another bag our, our, the bag that we just purchased, I think it's maybe a 20 inch bag. So it's, it's a little smaller and in a lot of ch- cases, we can carry that on. In Asia, it seems like we're not gonna get that on. It's gonna have to go under. Um, one of the things that we realized about the Asia Airlines is that it's really about weight. As a matter of fact, they don't want us to bring on anything that's more than uh, seven uh, kil- kilograms, which is about 14 pounds. That's not very much. And so neither of our bags would fit that. We have computers so and we're going to have to have a third bag that's going to like put, put our iPad and our laptop and our credit cards or whatever that's going to always be with us that's just really small that we're going to carry on. But I, again, I, I would, so just go look at Frontier's requirements. That bag, that really small bag that they're saying is going to like go in, under the seat in front of you. I think you could consistently get that on, assuming you don't put much more than 14 pounds on it, pretty much anywhere you go. But, but here's some good Arabia. news. Yeah. So Malanka, who has lived in Saudi Arabia for years and has just spent some significant time in Thailand, says that Asia is not so strict and very cheap if you're overweight. So that's great to know and that they never weigh in Asia anyway. But I'm going to even, so Tim didn't mention, there's a reason why we really wanted these carry-on bags is because of all this lost luggage. And so uh, so even if, yeah. so we're hoping to be bringing them on, but the backpacks that we are uh, have been, are kind of getting rid of are meant for like people bringing a laptop to work. And they've worked really well for us for years and years we uh, if we were doing like a little weekend trip from Denver this would be what we would often take um so that so what we're getting is more of like a small little zip it, it's a much more uh maybe I, I, when we get it uh we'll, we'll meet up with that in September I'll, I'll post that up in the go with less Facebook group um and, and again we, we never know if uh if it will work for us like so whenever we're, we're not like committing to this luggage for the rest of our lives we'll try it out if it works for us great if it doesn't we'll have to dump it and get something new that does work for us so I'm gonna answer so hey Eric uh, thanks for joining uh, you, uh, just a quick thing with your United card. Why don't you read this so they know? Oh, so Eric asked a question. He doesn't, it's not a question. It's actually a comment. It says, I was just approved for the United card. It took an extra week to get approved and I'm still waiting for it to arrive in the mail. So something that we realized when we're here in Europe, uh, so we thought this might be a concern. We, uh, we signed up for some new credit cards and we had to, we have a lot of spend on these credit cards in order to get the sign up bonus. They're off, they're going to require you to spend $3,000, $6,000 in whatever amount of time. And so both of the cards that Amy signed up for, we were able to add them to her Apple Pay account and also to my uh, Google wallet or whatever. And we could start spending on those cards immediately. So this, we didn't have to wait on the card to arrive. Um, we could actually start the, the, the process of spending uh, immediately with those cards. So that was super nice. I think um, I'm trying to think if we... Um, well, you're thinking about that. I'm gonna. So we do not have the cards in hand. We met the entire sign-up bonus for my Chase Sapphire Preferred, which is four thousand dollars, without having the card in hand. We have. Uh, we're working on our six thousand dollars on the Amex Platinum. No card in hand. It's a little trickier because Amex isn't accepted as frequently as uh, as Chase. But uh, another thing with that is. Um, oh, bye, Malanka. Um, but it's so easy. We haven't needed a dollar in cash. So even our, our tip on our free walking tour, we Venmoed him that on the spot. No, so, not Venmoed. He actually had a, a card reader that he carried with him that we paid him. With oh, on that's right. Card. Like, it's like a wireless. So I don't know if it, so I'm curious how this will work in the US, but we haven't had, we have spent 20 pounds uh, since we arrived in, uh, I don't know, for like two and a half months, we spent 20 pounds, the equivalent of like under mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and, thirty bucks in cash for for weeks and weeks, months. And Eric, you don't. So the so I, I two parts to your Eric asked the question is how did you get the full card number to add it? Number one, we didn't need the full card number. We just needed to go into if you I guess if you're new to Chase and you don't have an existing Chase account, this may be problematic. But if you have a Chase account like the Chase app on your phone, that card's going to show up in your app, and you can just go and say, okay, I want to add this to yeah. Apple Pay or I want to add it to Google Pay. That's a part of the app. For us, um, so we have done some spending on the card where we had the full card number and we did that spending online. It wasn't all just done done with the Google Pay app or, or, or the Apple Pay app. And how we got the card number is our card, and obviously this isn't gonna help you in your situation, but uh, our card is mailed to our mailing service in Texas and they just give us the card number remotely. So uh, they scan it 
and then we have it digitally so we actually have the, all the details of the card when it shows up there in Texas. But yeah, obviously and we it have took the card two seconds. So when you go, when you log into your Chase app, uh, open up that card, your new card, scroll to the bottom, and it gives you options. Add to your Google wallet, add to your Apple wallet. So easy, so fast. With two seconds later, I and so now I just leave. All I bring now is my phone. So my phone, I don't need, um, I don't need any more money. Yep. Somebody actually suggested and this is something I, I walk around with a wallet full of credit cards, which is kind of stupid. But uh, another stupid thing that I, I do. So, I, 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 so I'm going to stop doing that. So it's really nice just to have all your stuff on your phone. So it's just what, having that wallet is just one more thing to lose or That's leave money. behind. Like dirty. Yeah. And so uh, uh, also I think with my wallet, I'm going to, I am probably going to keep a wallet. Uh, that's just going to have a piece of identification in it, as well as uh, one or two credit cards. Maybe your health insurance yeah. card. Somebody also made a, a good suggestion, and that we we just started doing this over the course of the last month. A friend made this suggestion, is that um, so? As nomads, uh, we were walking around with our driver's license as our identification. So if you or a passport. Or a passport. So if you lose your driver's license, it's a huge pain. We'd probably and have we to. We couldn't. I don't know yeah, what we would do to get our driver's license replaced because I think you possibly have to go in to get it. Uh, so what we take for identification. Because we're the country. Because we're out of the country. So what we uh, have started taking around is our ID is our global entry card, which is a government issued identification. But if we actually lose that card, it's not that big of a deal. We don't need that card for anything. As a matter of fact, the functionality that comes with the card where you can just walk into uh, into the States and, and scan your passport is in your passport. So they, they know that you have the card, the card, I don't even know why they give it to you, but it is a form of government identification. So that's what we walk around. In. Okay, well, I see we're getting up on an hour. Yeah. So one, uh, one question here from you. Is there any advantage to these international driver's license that you can go into AAA and get? Is there, have you phoned any So we, we try our best not to drive a car. And so, uh, so I, but however, so all a, an international driver's license is, this is our understanding. If somebody has a, a better understanding, please speak up. But our understanding is all it is, is it's a translation of your driver's license into the local language. And so there's like 13 different languages that are printed on this thing. And we've got, we, we don't have one currently, but we have gotten one at AAA in the past. And so there are certain countries where they want you to have that. And uh, for, for this translation exercise, some mo many places will just take your existing driver's license and, and use that. We don't that. have a lot of experience. We, we don't have a lot of experience. With it. So uh, here would be my, my if you are planning to drive, I think it's a good idea. It's a relatively inexpensive thing. It's like 15 bucks. 20 bucks at AAA. Yeah, it's, it's not very much money. I would say just go get it and have it just to be prepared. If you're not planning to drive, there's certainly no reason to have an international driver's license in my mind. We, yeah, so we haven't driven internationally. I don't even, I guess we'll do it in Mexico. We drive internationally in Mexico. We do drive internationally in Mexico. Luckily, we've never had a need for that. That I could be know. a problem. That could be a problem. We probably should go and get an international driver's it's license. Probably not a bad when idea. When we're back in the U.S. Yeah. Okay, so we'll be driving in Mexico for three months, start, at least for six weeks, seven weeks, starting in October. Yeah. Yeah, that's our only time all year, though. Okay, so it's, it's about an hour. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you. I don't know how... We'll see. Hopefully, this will be up on uh, on YouTube. Now, if you are missing any of the photos, I should say that I'm adding. I'm, I'm in the Facebook group. I'm going to say every single day. So there's all kinds of stuff I'm adding. All the photos in there, um, video in there. So there, there's tons and tons of stuff. So it's kind of weird to not be able to show pictures of the castle and the, the palaces and the food. Um, but uh, but a lot of that's already been shared in the in the Facebook group. So please, if you're not a member of that group, make sure to join it because that's where there's a lot a lot of yeah. interaction happening Absolutely. over there. Yeah. every day. Okay. Hasta luego. Thanks for joining everybody.